So we've seen that we have a single source of truth. The next fundamental of Redux is that our state is read only. So that single source of truth we have, that object is read only. And the only way to change this state is to emit what is called an action. And that action describes what is going to happen. So Redux uses handlers to emit actions. And actions are a simple JavaScript object that expresses an intention to mutate our application state. This ensures that our views and network callbacks never directly write to our state. And we have a centralized way of changing our state. So we know exactly where and how our state is going to be changed. Let's take a look at what an action is and how it works. Using our Kickstarter example. So as I mentioned, our UI and our server never directly mutate our state. And our UI has handlers that emit actions. So if we take our Kickstarter example and we want to try and add a new project, rather than pushing a project to our state array, the UI would essentially say, please add a new project to the state. And it would do that via the handler and via an action. Let's take a look at an example action. So an add project. As I mentioned, actions are simple JavaScript objects that describe the change we want to happen. Actions have one required property and that is the type and we'll see exactly how this works later on. So for our example, the type would be add project. And it's all capitals like that because that's just a, a best practice, but we'll get onto that bit later as well. So that would be the type of action. We would then pass in any values and properties that we want to describe in the change of action. So we would describe our project, our title, so mission to Mercury and we'd have a goal as well. So let's go for $999,000. So that will be an example of a simple action. Actions are just payloads of information that send data from our UI to our store, to our state. And you dispatch actions from your UI. So this action would go into something called a reducer, which we'll find out about later. And the reducer would return a new state object that contains our new project. So if you imagine that this is our application state as it currently exists, the UI then expresses the intent to add a new project. So it sends this action to our store. Our store would add this to our state, we would then get a completely new state object back that would look like this. So it would have a new project in it. And I noticed I just had that as ID one, so that would be two, ID three. So this would be how our new states would look. So it'd be a new array and it would have that object added to it. So let's have a look at the life cycle of an action being dispatched to our store, to our state. So in this diagram, we have our UI, and this is obviously what the user is gonna see. And obviously for our case, they're gonna create a new project. So they're gonna type in the title and the goal of their project. The handler is going to emit this action so we're going to get this action here and it's going to be this object here. So it's going to have the type of action. And in our case, it's going to have some extra data, the project, the title 
and the goal. And that action is dispatched to our state. Now it's actually dispatched to something called a reducer, which we'll cover later on. But that reducer will then return from here, from our state, a new state object to our UI. So you remember that I said the UI and our network callbacks don't directly mutate our state. And you can see that here. So our UI never touches our state. It passes it to an action. An action goes into our state. Our reducer, which we'll learn about later on, will then mutate our state and create a new state object and pass it to our UI. So one thing I keep mentioning is that we always get a new state object back. And this kind of is part of fundamental number three, but I'll just cover it now as well, because it is really, really important. So in our reducer, in this bit of code you haven't seen, we will take our existing state and copy it to a completely new object, do whatever we want to do to that object. So in our case, it will add a new project and then we return that new object, that new state. So this actually gives us a history of changes to our state as well. So we will have the old state, the current state, the action, and then the new state. In the next video, we will cover the final fundamental. And then after that, we can start writing some code. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment.